This is Twit. The uh, folks at the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, we call them NHTSA, have put out uh, their standing general order on crash reporting. They're investigating crashes on uh, advanced driver assist systems, Tesla's are they particularly looking at Tesla or just all ADAS no, well, systems? This this came um, the the order originally came out uh, a year ago um, after they started doing an investigation into uh, a couple of dozen Teslas that had crashed into stationary fire trucks and police vehicles, emergency while vehicles, oper- while on yeah. while on autopilot. Yeah. yeah, and so this particular order applies to all automakers, suppliers, and uh, companies developing automated driving systems. So this includes companies like Waymo and Cruise and Argo AI and and others. Um, And what they have to do is within 24 hours of finding out, they have to report um, any crashes that involve either driver assistance or automated driving system um, being active within 30 seconds of the crash. So if the system was active and then shuts off and and then within 30 seconds you have a crash, they have to report that. Why that? And, was was well, it because, that anybody was, you know, f- switching them off right before a crash? Well, uh, it's not so much that people were switching them off, but there's been a lot of speculation. You know, there's been a lot of reports over the years from Tesla owners in particular that uh, got into crashes and they said, um, you know, my my car, it was an autopilot and it crashed. And, you know, Tesla looked at the data and said, nope, autopilot was not active at the time of the crash. But despite lots of questions over the years, and I know I asked Tesla multiple times over the years, you know, in any of these crashes, was the system active, you know, a few seconds before the crash? Because the, the user interface in these cars is often not entirely clear what mode you're in. It's not, it's not obvious much of the time if the system has deactivated and if you weren't paying enough attention that, you know, you might think that it was still active and then, you know, you get a crash and you think it's active, but it wasn't, which is why they at, why NHTSA asked for it to be, the data to be any any time the system was active within 30 seconds of a crash. I had heard, and maybe this is a scurrilous a- allegation, that Tesla was intentionally doing that so that Elon could say completely accurately, as he has done many times, self-driving was not turned on at the time of the crash. Is that I, is that I, just scurrilous, or is or you think there's some merit in that? I I don't think that they would intentionally turn it off. Or I mean, it's entirely possible they might fudge the data. Uh, I you know I'm not accusing them of that, but I think what is very reasonable is that you know in a lot of these situations the system did deactivate. You know when the car was going down the road, the driver thought it was still active, and you know did not take control when they should have. And then the car crashed. And this is why I think it's important to have this data. Unfortunately, um, the other thing that NHTSA did is they allowed these companies to declare certain bits of information, uh, confidential business information. Um, and so while the, the data is reported to NHTSA, um, when they rele- when NHTSA finally released the first batch of this data this week, uh, you know there were about 393 crashes uh, that were reported, 273 of which involved Tesla vehicles. Here, here's on the graph. Is this because yeah. Tesla reports more uh, accurately, more often, or is, mm, uh, is it No, more? I don't think so. Yeah. I, I, think, well, I think it's, you know, that they're, they're just crashing more frequently. Uh, is that um, because, well, I mean, they have more cars with ADAS out there, don't they? Uh, no, no, not really. Not necessarily, um, you know, because this includes, you know, a wide variety of different systems. And, you know, they're like, for example, the Hondas, you know, the, the next second highest number was Honda with 90. Uh, but, you know, arguably, the, you know, the Honda vehicles shouldn't have even been included in here because, you know, what they call level two systems are systems that control both steering and speed. And if the, um, if the, uh, you know the Honda, the Honda system, the two systems, the, st- the steering control, the lane keeping assist, and the speed control are, are separate systems. They're not consolidated. Um, and but you know the thing is, I looked through the data. You know, I read through the the, the the Excel file that they that they released, 
and in the descriptions of the crashes, I looked at all the Honda crashes. None of them were none of the crashes were actually uh, cases where the the ADAS was the problem. It was always you know the car was you know had um, adaptive cruise control and lane keeping assist on, went through an intersection and a car ran ran a stop sign and struck the car in the side. You know it was things like that. So it was all unrelated stuff, but because. Uh, NHTSA allowed um, information to be redacted. I looked through all 273 Tesla-related crashes. They redacted the descriptions. So we haven't, you know, NHTSA has the data, but we cannot, we so, do not know what happened in those So crashes. these gray wedges of this pie on, uh, on these crashes, unknown means not that NHTSA doesn't know, but they're not telling well, us. Well, in, in, some, in some cases, they, they actually don't know. Okay. You know, because it, it depend you know, it depends on how the data was reported. So there's cases where they, they actually don't know what the root cause was. Um, this and, is a really but, yeah. interesting, I mean, very complete. Yeah. I like driver assist systems. I've used them on Teslas. I've used them on Audi. I have it now on my Ford Mach-E. Uh, you know, that's adaptive cruise control. That's, that's an ADAS system, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. It, it absolutely is. Where it slows uh, down, and, and when the cars in front of you slow down, and speeds up when they speed up. Uh, lane changing is available in uh, Blue Cruise and uh, GM's um, whatever cruise they call that one. Super Cruise. Super Cruise, uh, right? You, the automatic mm -hmm. lane changing that would be a DAS. Uh, does anybody attempt to do as much as Tesla does, though? The, their their autopilot is uh, works. For instance. Not just on highways like Super Cruise and Blue Cruise, but on city streets. Supposedly, it it sees stop signs and stop lights and, and reacts properly to them. Is anybody well, it else? Well, sees them. It doesn't necessarily <laughs> react properly. I know sometimes it does. There's two two different things there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it, no, sees, it sees uh, as... it sees speed limit signs and reacts to those. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, no one has gone as far as what Tesla has done, at least from a marketing perspective. Um, yeah, and maybe that's are, part of the problem yeah, is that te I mean, Tesla, Tesla tells do, you it's a, it's an autopilot, so yeah, Tesla drivers that, that is a, rely that, on. That's it. a fundamental problem here. Yeah, you know, is the way that they brand it. Um, you know, both Blue Cruise and Super Cruise allow actual hands-free driving, um, so you can take your hands off the wheel. You still have to watch the road. Technically, with uh, autopilot, you're supposed to keep your hands on the wheel at all times. It's not supposed which, to be hands free, and they don't. Which doesn't they don't sound use driver like driver monitoring. So, right. So, exactly. Sorry, owner Owen. Oh, it just you know, autopilot suggests that. Like, right. You know, you can. Which is exactly why you have these crashes because people uh, assume that it's capable of more than it actually is. Yeah, that's yeah, but, that's a marketing problem. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't be called auto autopilot. Blue Cruise, Super Cruise, those don't imply that the, the plane will fly itself. Um, Sam, is, is there a secrecy problem in the self-driving industry? Because I saw that Waymo has also been trying to redact crash data. Uh, in this case, it's um, data that it reported to the California DMV. Someone sought that data, and now um, Waymo is trying to redact it. It's You know, are these... Do you feel like these companies have a legitimate trade secrets argument here, or is it just a smokescreen because they're embarrassed? I, I think it's I think it's a smokescreen. I don't, you know, when it comes to crashes, uh, I think that you know everything should be public. Um, there, you know, especially with these types of systems, because we don't we have, no one has uh, proven. You know that these systems are actually even as safe as human drivers yet, you know, and we cannot prove that un until we have this data. Um, you know, at, at least you know they are giving the data to government to to regulators, so at least the regulators have access to the data. But I think that you know it should be public. The the I think we have a right to know because these companies are doing experiments on public roads around other road users that have not consented to be part of an experiment. I mean, did you sign off saying, yeah, I'm okay with Tesla testing self, full self-driving uh, around me or Waymo or Cruise or anybody else? I certainly didn't. And so, you know, I think if they're going to test on public roads around other users, th all of this information about how and when and why they crashed um, should be public. I think we have a right to know that information.
I mean, we don't necessarily have a right to know, you know, all the, the source code and the specific, you know, all the details of necessarily why it crashed or what went wrong. But I think we should have a right to know what happened and, and where. Well, and, and that's what NHTSA's what standing general order says, right? You have mm -hmm. to, yeah. you must report. Uh, yes. And so now is everybody complying? Presumably they are. To the best we can tell, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, te Tesla has submitted, you know, two reports on 273 crashes in the past 11 right. months. Uh, so that's, you know, that's a good I start. I mean, there are tens of thousands of crashes. Mm-hmm. Uh, every month, it's about, it's about six. It's about six and a half million crashes a year in the yeah. United States. So, uh, and and worldwide, a million people die every year from auto mm -hmm. crashes. So, it's. I mean, I, doesn't mean these are not s safe. They may be much safer than a human driver. Well, you know, it depends. You know, it depends on. You you have to do. There's a lot of different driving scenarios. A lot of different conditions. And not all are equally challenging. Some but, but what this are doesn't much report is others. how many lives were saved by ADAS that a human driver might have, you know, caused a collision. That's true. I mean, it's we hard don't know to prove that. a negative. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to prove a negative. Yeah, you can't. But we can't know that. If, yeah. I understand. It, you know, if but there, it may if be the are, case that in fact that it's saving lives. We don't know. It may be. We, we, yeah, we don't, we don't have any evidence to that. Uh, to that effect and to that that's direction. the problem yeah you know we need we need more data to understand you know in the in the scenarios where these systems are being used are they actually safer because you know i mean driving driving in you know urban environments you know at relatively slow speeds you tend to have a lot of crashes but they tend not to be fatal right most you know half more than half of crashes are happening on but rural roads there's a lot of idiots <laughs> Oh yeah, driving seventy-eight miles an hour down a down the highway, causing wrecks, causing cl injuries and death, humans. Mm -hmm. So I that I but guess we also that's my drive question. over three trillion miles a year. Well, I just understand. In the United States. I get. I mean, but the, we can't. We don't know because we can't know if this is a uh, if if 8S is a, is a positive or a negative. Right. We don't know that. That this information doesn't, so it's important to remember that. Will NHTSA use this information to regulate, or what's the intent of this? That's that's the that's the long term plan. You know, up to now they've never really collected data on the efficacy of these driver assist systems. So this is the first time that they're really getting, you know, some hard data from the industry uh, about how effective these systems actually are. And you know, so they're going to be taking a, a close look at this data to try to understand. You know, where do they work? Where do these systems not work? And you know, what if anything needs to be regulated? How or, or you know, how do how do we create standards for the performance of these systems? We're somewhat immune because because this happens all the time to the number of auto deaths, crashes, and incidents that happen all the time, mm -hmm. constantly. Uh, and 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 so it's it's an easy thing to be fooled. For instance. When you talk about uh, electric vehicle fires, it scares people until they remember that there are gas vehicle fires all the time. It's not... 200,000 a year. 200,000 a year. So <laughs> uh, it's really important to remember, yeah, 273 Tesla accidents, but put it in context... We, and this is the problem: is that we don't, we just really don't know if ADAS is a net positive or a negative. We and we can't know that. We don't know how many accidents were avoided by ADAS. My experience as a driver is, and by the way, I pay attention because I don't trust the damn thing. But, <laughs> but, but, but which I, is my, wise. which is the right, I no, think the right no, way to no use it. No one should be trusting this. Yeah, technology. no, that's the right way to use it. But it is a help. And there have been many times, and I bet you everybody watching has had an experience. Uh, if you have one of these cars that stops before you hit a car in front of you or a pedestrian <laughs> my daughter how said, often are you accidentally almost hitting pedestrians well uh, yeah. not a lot but it happens right have you ever well do you drive <laughs> paris first of all do you drive i no. think you bicycle so you don't that, know. yeah i was gonna say i've yeah. been quiet during this as the brooklyn who has an e-bike uh, <laughs> and, and believe well, me well, let's, let's if there weren't so many cars around, everywhere how many I'd... times have you almost been hit by a car yeah there you oh, go all the time all the time yeah mm -hmm. uh and I, I think that these new technologies where cars stop before they, you know, I'll tell you what, my car has stopped me two or three times from backing into traffic. It has a big beeper that says there's cross traffic. And I go, whoa, 
I didn't see that one. So I think you can probably make a strong case that these things used properly are a net plus. And and I think you know things like blind spot monitoring and cross traffic alert are huge. You know they're, they're, they are truly valuable and they, they are truly beneficial and they're relatively low cost. But you know some of the other stuff, especially if you treat it as if it's self driving. Yeah, that's when the key. It's not that's, that's why autopilot's a bad choice. We yeah. had uh, there is a curve we I drive down on the way to San Francisco that my Tesla would invariably try to pull me into the wall because it just got confused. But I know that, and I had my hands on the wheel, and when it started to veer out of the lane, I would pull it back into the lane and be fine. Um, but but look at the case of Walter Wong, the the Apple engineer, that's tragic. who tragic. died in in 2018. Yeah, yeah, he drove his Tesla every day. He had multiple instances of the same car problem on autopilot trying to pull him into that same spot same on that median, yeah. that interchange, yeah. where he ultimately died. Yeah, yeah, and he reported it to Tesla, and you know. And yet he continued to use the system. That's the problem. You know, in a way, you know, and that's, yeah, the, the you know, <laughs> again, it comes back to the human behavior. Humans. Because of the, the expectation, the, the the erroneous expectation we have about the capabilities right. of these systems. I have not, I'm just happy to say, <laughs> been the cause of any accidents in my life. I've been in a few, but it's always rear-ended or, some, you know, somebody ran, ran into me. Uh, but I do use those, especially on highway stop and go traffic uh i've used the tesla lane change mechanism i don't i never had a full self-driving tesla but i felt like those made me better drivers because uh it just you know and and and, it, and by the way one of the best features of uh, automatic cruise control is it it actually keeps more uh, more car lengths between you and the car in front of you it keeps the proper amount humans never do right humans are always tailgating because we don't we're not we can't adjust to the idea that you're not going to be able to stop in 60 feet. You know, you're going too fast. Uh, but the car knows it. And so I let the car determine the, the distance from the car ahead of me. And I'm of course, trying to remember driver's ed. Aren't you, you know, isn't like six seconds? Two, two, yeah. two second rule. Two second two rule. Second. Yeah. But I mean, how are you going to time you know, that? That, that, distance, <laughs> that distance depends on your speed, you know, what speed you're going. Right. You know, the, the you car know, does it perfectly. You're going to cover a lot more ground in two seconds at 70 miles an hour exactly. than it 20. The car, I'm presuming, does it perfectly. And uh, so I trust it. And it's a lot farther than unless I would it, do otherwise. Unless it's not using radar. If it's only using cameras, which is what <laughs> Tesla does now, they, right. they stopped using radar, then, you know, then it, it is actually, does actually, actually doesn't do a very good job of, and can't do a very good job of distance measurement, which is also why they have a problem with phantom oh, braking, randomly yeah. slamming on the brakes when there's nothing there. That happened to, Lisa hated that. That happened to her all the time in her Tesla, uh, in our Tesla. And uh, she actually was the one who said, you can never buy another Tesla <laughs> because of a number of automated systems that <laughs> failed her. <laughs> uh, I like in the, uh, in the chat, Chumley says, if you leave the gap, a blue BMW will fill it. Well, that, by the way, <laughs> is exactly right. Because I leave exact, you know, it's, sometimes it's five or six lengths. And inevitably somebody says, oh, that's nice. Thank you for letting me in. And now I have but, to slow down. <laughs> but your 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 Mach E, you know, one of the features it's using it has, radar. It right? actually has it has five radar sensors. Yeah. It's got a long range radar in the front, mm -hmm. and then four medium range corner radars mm -hmm. that it uses to detect cut ins. So if if a blue BMW or anybody it slows else down. Yeah. goes in there, you know, it, yeah. it will open up that gap and yeah. let them in. I I feel much safer in my Mach E, but it doesn't attempt to do as much. I don't have no. Blue Cruise yet. It doesn't attempt to do as much. So. The irony is that those people who are weaving in and out and switching lanes. I remember a study I read once that like they don't gain any advantage. Of in course not. Of, no. Know, like getting getting where they're going any faster. So yeah, maybe we should let the you know let the robots just drive us and you know. I'm gonna get shot one of these all... days because when somebody does that, they weave in and out of traffic and they go by me and then and then they're at the stoplight and I catch up with them. I always wave at them. <laughs> 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 and I yeah, know that somebody's going to... You don't want to do that. No. Road rage is real. Oh.